Greetings, ladies and men gents, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series, The Nature of Predators. If you're new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 165 Memory Transcription Subject, Ambassador Tava of the Venal Republic Date, Standardized Human Time, March 24th, 2137 The first meeting of the Sapien Coalition was in the past. But now more than ever, my sights were set on the future. Humanity's assortment of allies had been very receptive to the idea of fixing the Vendel's hindrances, since, in our case, it had nothing to do with us not being herbivores, it was about us not being meek, deformed herbivores that followed the Federation's guidelines. Noah and I returned to Skalga with a new lease on life. A week from today's date, I was set to be the first Vendel to have my gene tampering reversed. It would be televised through the press conference, which Governor Val insisted on being part of for optics. My summons to the Governor's mansion had mainly been to brief our leader on what happened during the convention, but Val saved the topic of today's referendum for last. Val flicked his ears placidly. Thank you both for coming to fill me in. I made sure to expedite the planet-wide vote on the planet's name, as promised. I'll abide by the results, regardless of my distaste for Skulga. I'd also preferred not to keep Venal Prime around, so the options were Skulga versus other or stay the same. It'll be wonderful to shed another part of the Federation's influence. That was our point of mutual agreement, I replied. I was planning on submitting my vote online as soon as we were done here. Don't worry, I won't keep you long. No, I can see your feet blatantly pointed towards the door. A sign of where you wish to be? The astronaut grimaced. Uh, do I have to answer that? No. But may I remind you, I didn't ask you to come. When Tava brought you, I let you tag along as a sign of goodwill towards your people. I'd say that I'd prefer to talk to my SC ambassador without a foreign government's agent in the room. But I imagine she'll tell you everything anyway. For your information, I can keep my work separate, especially when villainal interests are involved, I hissed. Noah wouldn't say anything that wasn't meant for you and ears, though. He's honorable. A dark emotion flickered in Valen's pupils, and he hesitated. I must ask, uh, how in the stars did you keep the humans at bay, Tava? Insight would be accepted from Noah at this point. They have, uh, ways of being persuasive. By coercing people to do what they want, trapping you with your own words, finding every loophole and technicality in the law. Is that why you went along with everything they said? Was I wrong about your motives? And uh, that doesn't sound anything like Terrence. Oh, that sounds everything like us, love. Noah growled, a low chuckle rumbling in his throat. <laughs> our diplomats are quite skilled at uh, protecting our interests. I understand what you're capable of and what you uh, can do in threatened. But contrary to what Valm thinks, we disagreed on plenty. I never felt pressured to do anything I didn't want to. Because you care about us, and we care about you. Everyone at the UN knew you had humanity's back, so we had yours. We knew you wanted what was best for us, for Vendel, and for the entire galaxy. That was the one issue we had to agree on. It's really that simple. Valm over there wants to play hardball and trade favors, so he's asking for an entirely different relationship between us. The governor narrowed his eyes. I'm trying not to ice humanity out. Vendel are my top priority, but I don't mean any act of harm to you. If you watch out for Vendel first, then the UN will elevate human interests above yours. Tava considered us as much as Vendel, just as we considered you in the same level as us. It's up to you what relationship you want with Earth, Val. But the way you're operating now won't merit true brotherhood. We are fiercely loyal, but we are also give what we get. I think you know that's fair. What I know is that I want us to be independent, and I don't want anything dictated to us from outside our borders. It's not personal, it's just business. I stood from my chair, grabbing Noah's hand. It was always personal to me and them. Humans are sweet, but they're not pushovers. What you told them was what you didn't want your talks to be personal, so they've taken emotion out of their decisions. It is just business now. I don't see the issue. The problem is that tactics are downright predatory. Tava, they're ruthless and manipulative. Then you're perfect for each other. And Val, don't ask my advice unless you want to know how to start treating the Terrans as friends again. Like I said, their welfare is personal to me. Let's go, Noah. 
My human was trying not to laugh at the outraged look on the governor's face. I suppose it could be viewed as an audacity that I'd spoken to Vuln in that manner. But ousting me as ambassador would sour his political points. There was some curiosity in my mind about what humanity had done that the shifty Venel found predatory. Still, it was enough to know that the United Nations was well equipped to handle his self-centered schemes. I had noticed some major modifications on the visor law released to the public. My mind also harkened back to how Elias Mayer had warned me about certain elements in his own government being snakes in the grass, which Noah agreed with. Governor Valen invited out a side of humanity that has been keeping away from us. With legislation being targeted at their species, it's self-defense. Noah allowed himself to smoke once we reached our vehicle. It was funny, but I'd advise not antagonizing Valen going forward. You're not going to be able to get any favors from him if you make an enemy of him. You haven't exactly welcomed Valen with open arms, and you made sure that he knew that you can't stand him, I protested. I was never that forthright, Tarba. You basically called him predatory. I'm pretty sure that's the worst insult in your culture. Only after Val used it against humanity. That Val should not think of himself about that. I know, but I know how important it is to you to have breathing room with your sapient coalition. You don't want Val to put you on a short leash, uh... Uh, forgive the predatory Meredith for. I flicked my knees in acknowledgement, digesting his point. Governor Val had been willing to take some of my ideas under advisement, and he'd thrown his full support behind certain initiatives that mattered to me. The gene edit reversal and Skalgar referendum were genuine positives that had sprouted from his rule. Well, there was little to gain from turning my successor into an enemy. Noah watched with curious eyes as I pulled out my holopad, eager to see our voting process in action. I completed the double retinal scan, authenticated my conscious decision to vote through the code sent to my email, and scanned my ID card in front of the camera. The two options, Skalga and Other slash Stay the Same, showed as buttons in large font. I tapped Skalga, clicked the checkbox to confirm my choice, and submitted the ballot after pressing Yes when asked if I intended to pass along the results. Noah smiled as I snuggled up to him before prying the holopad from my grasp. The predator searched up the exit poles, and his teeth splashed vibrantly as he turned the screen around to face me. Overwhelming public sentiment was in favor of retaking our ancestral name, with over 75% of those surveyed being Skalga supporters. Valn's attempt to dissuade the populace from bringing back the name the Federation stole from us failed. Though it wasn't a certain guarantee, it gave me an assurance that one of my initiatives had been taken to heart. Our child is going to grow up in Skalga, able to run, jump, and smell. They'll be free of the instincts that have held us back to, if I had my way. Noah's eyes fluttered over to me. What do you say before SC meeting next week? We finally take that vacation to Earth. We haven't been able to go through with it for so long. I'd love to see where you grew up, after all. I want to make sure our child is familiar with Earth. We'll be spending plenty of time on human soil as a family, I purred. You're really excited about that, uh, step, aren't you? I've been thinking about it too. Settling down, having kids just wasn't ever in the cards for me. Exploring the universe was my calling, and that ruled out what might have been. The fact that we found extraterrestrials. It was like reaching the finish line of a race that I thought I'd just started. It was just a culmination of my dreams. If you're not excited about the idea of children, Noah, you don't have to pretend for me. It's okay. Your feelings are important, too, and I don't want you to be unhappy in silence out of kindness. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just explaining that it is the first time that I thought about this, and I have no idea what to do raising a kid. A kid from a different species, no less. You, meanwhile, have experience with parenting and have ideas about how you want to raise the little fella. I'm not sure I could contribute or be as prepared for it as you. It's a huge responsibility, and the more I think about it, the more I know it. You're overwhelmed by the prospect? Well, yeah. I had an amazing dad, and I want to be just like him. I'm not worried that I have the wrong temperament or anything, but I don't want to undersell the work and commitment it'll take from both of us. The fact that it'll be a massive undertaking, as is, it's why I'm worried to suggest the idea that I can't get out of my head. Breathe. We're going to figure out what's best for us both, and it'll be okay. Uh, what's your idea? It might be too much to ask, uh, and I don't want to spoil your vision. 
Noah, I sprung on you that I'm getting experimental gene mods and looking to have kids with zero warning. I think we've already crossed the too much to ask. The human's hands were trembling from nerves, and I gently coiled my tail around his wrist to calm him down. Our conversation back in the Sapling Coalition meeting had been harrowing from my side. So, if Noah was addressing a topic that of that magnitude for our personal lives, I could understand his apprehension. He was worried about putting our relationship on the rocks or scaring me off. I gently cupped his chin with my paw, giving him my best look of affection. Whatever change he felt compelled to suggest to our plans, I was willing to listen. Both of us were from different cultures and lives, so we could handle opinion schisms in a mature way. Maybe Noah's not ready for the responsibility quite yet. He sounds stressed. We're not getting younger, but I could wait a few years if it'll make it more palatable for him to ease into. I want to do this together. The astronaut drew a shaky breath. Um, obviously, I'm not capable of giving birth, but uh, what if we adopted a human child? Oh, my voice came out flat as I tried to keep my emotions from spilling over. The thought of splitting up with Noah cut me like a knife, but a difference in interest that severe would be difficult to overcome. I uh, understand if raising a vandal is not right for you, but the entire reason I wanted this was about having a child that can live a life I will never have. I can't give that up, even for you. Uh, no, I'm not, not saying not to have a vandal child at all. I, uh, I'm sorry for being unclear. I, I'm talking about raising a human child uh, alongside the little fluff ball. Raising them together, uh, it's an added responsibility, I know, but I found the idea really uh, uh, be beautiful. Uh, a family that bridges the species gap. It was my turn to be taken off guard by Noah's suggestion towards our plans. Though I didn't feel averse to the idea, I could imagine a little primate with tiny Vendel running around in the park, laughing as one big family. Of course, I had no idea what was needed to raise a human, but I suppose that put me in the same boat as my partner. He was clueless what went into rearing one of my species' younglings. Having helpless sapiens that were dependent on us to survive would mean that we could learn about the other's kind at a fundamental level. Calling a predator my own child, caring and loving for them, just as my astronaut would love a Vendel, felt right. It was a daunting challenge for both of us, yet I couldn't agree with the heartwarming idea fast enough. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Noah, I replied. Raising a human and Vendel alongside each other, as siblings, I'll love our little Earthborn. I don't think I can call them a goober. Uh, you can suggest an adorable nickname? The Darren's pearly fangs showed with a radiant smile. You can call them a goober, but why go for that when you can say our little vicious predator? Ah, yes. Humanity, the vicious species, whose first contact with the Zerillians was the visiting ambassador curling up on a human diplomat's shoe. A human diplomat's vicious shoe. How can a shoe be vicious? I'm sure the Federation would drum up some evil intentions we have with our foot coverings. Obviously, we use it to harden our feet to kick prey animals, like this. Noah lightly batted his shoe against my ankle, amusement dancing in his eyes. Wait, I actually heard a story back at the embassy about someone throwing a shoe at a receptionist to distract security at the UN base, sir. I don't know how true that was. You could have stopped the first part, but you just had to correct your words, don't you? Accuracy is important. Science doesn't mess around with truth, my love. I wouldn't want anyone to say I omit unflattering aspects of the truth. I value my integrity. I value your integrity and everything else about you, Noah Williams. You're the person who completes me, who gets me, and makes me feel like I'm free to be happy again. I'm so glad the universe crossed our paths. I love you with all my heart. The human's binocular eyes fixed on me with an intense focus. I love you too, now, forever and always. I'll love you to the heat death of the universe. I rested my head against the predator's sturdy chest, exhaling with contentment. All I'd hoped for in recent months was a peaceful future between us and humanity. While I couldn't work as fervently towards that on the political stage, events in my personal life could align towards that sincere goal. My passion could also be devoted to returning the Venel to our roots and finding out what we were without the Federation. The referendum looked like a lock to return our name to Skulga, which meant the public was on the same page. Maybe after Noah and I paved the way for the post-gene reversal life, others would follow. For the first time since my daughter's death, I felt the best days of my personal life were ahead. 
Humanity's arrival was what gave me the chance to have a family again, freeing me from my ignorance and opening new doors into the future. I was grateful to have a partner who'd invested himself in my dreams and morphed them into a joint effort that could give us a unique, wonderful opportunity. There was no telling what came next for us, but I was excited to see where the journey would lead. End of chapter. I would just like to thank our T5 members, Lord Azrakal, Ambrose Cattell, Quantum Wednesday, Dregzoon WRE, Blueberry Cat, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Bushmaster 177, and Leslie 517. Thank you very much.